Cool. Let's just roll like that. Let's just roll like that. It's rolling for our YouTube channel now already. Hello. I'm just gonna check these potatoes. Hello, all on YouTube land. Do it. Do it. Do an intro for our YouTube people, Lynn. Help! I. Make a good one. I'm do starting it. that. Hello, everyone on YouTube land. I guess I don't really need to talk into the mic, but look at our new setup. How cool is this? We were like, we actually got some feedback from a friend that um, our background should be more awesome. Uh, thank you, friend, for that. And we took that into serious account, and we we're gonna get this like big cool piece of fabric to have like a cool big just background on. Just big background. On. But then we got gifted these mics. Same friend. Same friend. And uh, we had to figure out how to use, I guess, the stands. Is that what you did? Huh? You, we had to figure out how to utilize these stands, I think. And the only way we could do that was this with this table that our fish and I is on. We have a fish named Shania. Yeah. Welcome everyone to another episode of Discipline Stoners on the audio version now. Okay, hi, welcome everybody. My name is Winnie. I'm Eleven, and we are the gateway bridge for mindfulness. Gateway drug. Oh, I fucked it up. <laughs> First time I fucked it up. We, yeah, we got this uh, cool, what is this called? Like, this is not our mission statement. What's the, what's the, what we... It's like just, I don't know, that subtext to like what things are about. Like, you know, like, yeah. taste the rainbow. Skills yeah. taste the rainbow. What's that? What's that Slogan? Subtext? Slogan. We're the mindful drug to... We're, fuck! I keep fucking it up. I'm practicing with you guys. We're the gateway drug to mindfulness. Yeah! That's what we've coined ourselves. And I fully believe that. This sounds so much better. Great. This I'm is so the glad. best our podcast has ever sounded. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you to the bro, Matt. Yeah. Huge and, shout out. Matt and, Santoro. And also just thank you to everyone who's watching and thank you yeah. to everyone who's listening. This is this, fun for us. This is so much fun for us and I we don't just, know, it's kind of cool. We, we want to do this podcast full time. So if you could share this with your family members, that would be <laughs> much appreciated. No, I don't, I don't know what the peak is to that, but like, honestly, I'm just enjoying having these conversations with you still. Yeah. So fun. We, we actually, I'm on the side of not changing it now, but I had been bringing up with Eleven discussing changing the, uh, name, the name of the podcast yep. because I, I guess I was fearful that we were missing out on people who don't fuck with weed. Or just, yeah, people who are just a little outdated in their uh, practices. Like, for us to, because we do workshops, we just wrapped our first uh, remote workshop, which was so good. Round of applause for us for that. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. I had such a good time with you and our group. Me too. Wow. wow. A lot of learning. Transformational for the, the guides. Beautiful, beautiful. And we also want to bring that message to people who we think really need it most, who people who are stuck in the system, like the corporate stacking of things, and like, take yourself a time to love yourself, and it's like, how are we going to be able to access those people unless we have a, hey, hey, friendly unicorn name? Uh, you know, a, the perfect example is Mind Valley. Like, whoa, just nailed it. Like, nailed it. Like, you, you, you are authentic to mindful explorers like that name and it also looks really okay on a corporate invoice yeah I mean, disciplined stoners <laughs> may seem like what, what, was this for the party janine what, what was this for it's like no that was the retreat for five of our executives and it was like they were just getting stoned all day in mexico were they hmm. but it's like if that's a problem for you if someone smoking weed is a problem for you then like Maybe I don't need to worry about keeping you in my life then. I'm not really trying to prove anything other than I am trying to show that the stereotypes that you may know about stoners or may perceive about stoners are wrong. I think that I want to show... That no, I want to show that the good things are right. That's what I want to show. I want to show that like stoners can be productive and super intelligent and super focused and yeah weed isn't meant to be used by everyone in that capacity for sure but just like yeah i think that even having weed in our title does associate some sort of actual forward movement with 
uh, the association. And if we don't stand up and make those moments and be those pillars and be those connecting bridges that say, no, this is okay, it's an intelligent, mindful thing to do if you do it with the right intention and right self-awareness to it, then uh, I, I want to stand by that. I think there's more value in that than us just getting a, you know, a corporate gig. Yeah, I mean, you're just so... Um, Outrageous. <laughs> unpredictable anyway so it's like we wouldn't yeah like fucking demo's not gonna hire us anyway <laughs> like with my background and track record like you look at the host right away it's like look at his freestyles like yeah we're already out like i drag winnie right into gangsterville with me. <laughs> i don't think smoking weed is gangster i do that's why i do it well regardless i'm just being silly did you spill some water there yeah i'm cleaning um, it up great thank you uh, regardless, I don't, yeah, I don't think I want to anymore. I don't, I think that we all know that stereotypes are, stereotypes for a reason. People always say that. That's what, that's a whole, that's a whole, that, that sentence is a stereotype itself. It's like stereotypes are stereotypes for a reason. They are and though. They, they are. are. They absolutely are. So I, I think that there's nothing to fight against because if someone wants to give me examples of lazy stoners or, or people where, that use weed. That That's just lazy people who smoke weed and also happen to smoke weed. <laughs> yeah, or even use weed as escapism. Like I, I definitely right. know that that's a thing. Right. Um, and and they have, they're gonna find those examples. That's a thing for sure. It's so definitely it, a thing. it doesn't really matter what anyone thinks. Oh, purple platinum platinum grape. Purple oh. platinum grape. <laughs> it smells so good. It smells so perfect to me. Mm, it smells like grape. It really does. You are so grapey weed to me. Anyway. Um, our slogan, we are a gateway drug to mindfulness because yeah. no matter which way you want to slice it, our intention here is to talk about mindfulness, self-growth, and self-awareness and hopefully stumble across some stories and things and ideas that help you unlock something that you're going through because I'm a firm believer in that we manifest the right message at the right time. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten that beautiful message from someone that says that they took something from a song of mine like at the right time in their life and that is like ultimately the fuel that keeps me going a lot of the times to know that like just by talking your shit and like you know yeah. being, being who you really are can inspire someone so we hope you to go forward and to do that yeah to, go and to see us do it and then go forward and to do that as well and then yeah and then also just thanks because yeah, appreciate It's really you. cool that you're listening. Yeah, we appreciate this. We appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, we Your really attention. Do. We like talking. You know, I don't want to fucking make too big of a deal out of it. We're just here flowing and recording it anyway. But like, yeah, it's really nice. I think we're feeling the effects. I think we have a lot of gratitude right now. We're feeling the effects of our community because of our workshop. Yeah, absolutely. We just spent two weeks, you know, with, uh, you know, some folks that we, that we attracted into our lives through the podcast. You know, they know us from uh, some stuff that we do, including podcasts, and and yeah, we've we've uh, created some really great moments of sharing, and yeah. some really great moments of manifestation, and some really great moments of uh, just connection. It's beautiful. Did you? I know for me, it, there was a lot of learning because Eleven and I both did the course. Um, that we've yeah. created along with everybody else. We wrote a two week course to catch anyone up who, who doesn't know or who's joining us just now. Yeah. We did a, we wrote a, a two week course remote uh, activation uh, where usually we'd love to have the bodies all in the same room, but to do that for two weeks would require a retreat. So we, we wrote something like a program and there's a PDF that you get as soon as you sign up for the course. And there's assets that go along with that, like uh, specific meditations. We decided to focus on the chakras for this uh, first workshop because aligning the chakras is really important work. Everyone at the end of the wrap up in our in our Zoom wrap up, everyone was like, I, I'm gonna continue to study the chakras. And there's just so much depth there, it's so yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so both of us did it. And for myself, um, I felt a a lot shifted uh, was there anything that was particularly like created some vulnerability for you in the last two weeks or because I was really uh, touched by 
how vulnerable the, the group was being and I think that's really important when mm-hmm. you're doing emotional work yeah and it's like one of the scariest things it's one of the scariest things to just actually say what's going on instead of covering it up with like how busy you are and if you weren't so busy you wouldn't be so tired you wouldn't feel this way and it's just like what's at like peel it all back what's why do you have this underneath mm-hmm. um and and when you get to the heart of that, I think that you can really um, hold yourself in like true support. And mm-hmm. if if you're vulnerable enough to tell someone else about it, they can also hold you in a way that maybe you've not been held before. You know, like in terms of support, and we're we're covering our problems with all of these bullshit surface surface issues mm-hmm. and and. The work is deeper than that. So even if you solve those surface issues, it's like it'll come back if you don't just be vulnerable, I guess, is really where this is going. So I was wondering if you had any mo- moments of vulnerability um, or, or learning in that regard. Taking profound responsibility for how I feel and sharing that with other people, um, <laughs> for sure, or sharing it with myself or looking at it. I mean, we set intentions at the top of the two weeks, right? Yes. Halfway through, I was there. Like, I was finding myself having more balance in moments, um, which was my intention to balance in, like, specific perceptions of masculine and feminine energy and people and my reactions to them and the manifested sex and the energy and stuff like that. I think I have actually found a more center point balance for my energy. And a lot of that was accepting more masculine energy, to be honest, in me. Because I'm very creative very actually feminine but I have very masculine qualities on the surface but um just mentally so yeah uh so there was that uh so that was kind of more like on paper progress but uh as far as the vulnerability I think in my life what's happened is like I really just don't have time for anyone who's not on like some like go get it winner shit like just you know what I mean like for me like I just there's becoming less and less room for like people with insecurities in my space and it's not that I'm like frustrated with those people anymore I'm just like oh like you gotta go fix that like I'm I'm not operating at the place anymore it's like now I've worked with like enough stars that I'm like dude like like I need to give myself 100% attention of like across the board like best 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 like I've Without being able to even tell myself, I've struggled with self worth in some certain ways. I got this. I'm good. Cool. Um, yeah. So I think in my life, like without like following the book of the workshop or whatever, you'll see the magic happen. Like in your life, and in my life, I've like just dismissed anything that doesn't feel good. Anything that doesn't feel like it's like supportive or loving or just like top confidence, like if anything's being done half ass around me, I just I can't. And Do you ever feel bad about that? No, because I I bless them, like I bless them, like I, I'm like I love you guys, like you know what I mean, like I have come past the point where I'm scared I'm that, so I'm not reacting to it, so I'm just like, oh like. You know, like Abraham says, you see a kid fall down, you're not like, get up, little dummy, right? You see a kid fall down, you're like, it's okay, like, tomorrow's a new day. Like, it's all good. But as far as, I think I'm hyper aware because, like, I'm hanging around 30 and, like, I want to make greater strides. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of people, no matter what industry you're in or anything, just kind of get that, I I don't want to call it antsiness, but essentially I'm riding my first wave of my life. Like, you get a wave at 28 and a wave at 58. Second wave if you can take it. And if not, you get sick and die. And that's just what happens. And it's all good. But, like, there's two general points to your life. I'm just not, I'm not fucking around anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I'm saying the thing. Like, that. Like, and it's a oh, lot for people. Wow. And that's why we fucking, we, we're making responsible decisions now of where to put me. Because I'm increasingly becoming more decided that this is the right way. It's the same pr- problem Dave Chappelle has right now. <laughs> It's not the same problem exactly, but I'm saying once you decide that like I'm just gonna be myself I'm sorry like you can't affect me like I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry like it's Maybe it's my start to my old stubborn madness, but like 
ultimately it feels very freeing and very good and I find myself in a better state of heart than ever good. when I give someone my attention it doesn't matter what it is or where it is I'm I'm giving someone my attention yeah and I'm able to give wholeheartedly whether yeah. I'm in a meeting for a million dollars or whether I'm talking to a guy holding the door for me at the gas station look them in the eye and give them that moment it's the most tender beautiful love that you can ever have and it actually came from a place of me deciding that my ego identity was just fine I have decisions to make I'm sorry that I'm not sorry anymore you know what I mean your opinion has absolutely nothing to do with how I feel about myself anymore like that's good it never really did I've always not given a fuck but I've always pushed against so you could tell that it did bother me yeah. what was I pushing against what was I fighting no I'm not even fighting anymore I'm like thanks like thanks for this contrast I'm not interested bless you and like not even feeling reactive in, inside I used to feel reactive inside and still practice those things but it's gotten to another level and I am who I am like and, I, and I'm open to evolving the things that are on my agenda to evolve I'm not open to change for other people I'm because you don't change for other people it's unsustainable to think you're gonna change for other people you don't you yes. cannot you can only change for yourself so the quicker you get to that point the quicker you stop being a motherfucking superhero and start thinking you're gonna make everyone else happy make yourself happy and then you can give really give I've been really giving and I feel good in terms of energetically, you know? Or any way I can. How can you show up? It has to work for you or else it's unsustainable. Just went on a bit of a rip there, bud. You, you ripped it out. Ripped it out. I whipped it out and ripped it out. Oh my god. Platinum purple with a little bit of keef. That was in the grinder, so it was probably lots of different weeds. What's been some of yours? What's been parts of your vulnerable growth? I am I love you so much right now. very kind to myself. <coughs> beautiful. <coughs> it is beautiful. <coughs> but I'm also very hard on myself. <coughs> And I think the communication with myself is getting stronger and that's allowing my choices to feel better in my body. Ooh, that tastes good. Wow. You're my favorite person on the planet. <laughs> I just got <clears throat> the best video I'm gonna put on our story, and I saved it, so I'm gonna put it as a reel too. You're my favorite person in the whole world. No, I'm not ready for a reel. You can't be on a reel. No, nope. just a story that disappears, please. Oh, with smoking weed. Yeah. Oh shit! I forgot about that. <laughs> That's a cool journey. See, like, I think that it's so fun that we are partners because, bro, we're so fucking different. Like that I love like yeah, if someone just, tells me there's a rule I'm like let me break it like I'm the, I'll be the well, first to come break it I in thought, front of everyone I thought about this today because <laughs> I I was thinking about why this is such an issue and no good I respect it I dig it no for sure I I don't actually I, I think it kind of sucks like oh. I I'm an actor that has been in a halt like a hallmark Esque style film, and it's now. dropping again in the states, and yeah. it's, it it is kind of directed towards family. Yeah. So you're being aware of the, the whether you like it or not. You have partnerships. When you do projects, you're fucking with people. That's yeah. why I get offended when collabs don't go hard. It's like you're you are part of something that's bigger than just yourself. So you're making decisions. I mean, it's all just yourself because it's in your mind, it's your perception, but. You're making decisions that benefit a greater whole, and that's admirable. Yeah, I suppose. I think that it would be nice if, an, like, all of the... I was trying to find a woman example who didn't go through the 
like I guess mostly in music, but it happened in acting too. Like Drew Barrymore, Angelina Jolie, like they were all this like they were what they were supposed to be mm. until they couldn't do that anymore and then they like that that's when they burst into their either like womanhood or like they rebelled and mm. they were like fuck you Miley everybody. Cyrus Miley Cyrus Miley went through this too Rihanna went through mm. it yeah like there's examples of women everywhere doing what they need to do especially women in the entertainment industry doing what they need to do to get enough power mm. to then yeah. go through sort of this awakening to be like, I'm actually my own person. And by that point, they've they've gathered enough people to have su support in their new transition. They they, they'll definitely wrong. lose some people, for sure. But they won't lose everything. And I was trying to think, I'm trying to nice. think of some a woman in particular that hasn't done that and and like because you go through this sort of thing where you just comply to what it is that is necessary for everyone else and you don't get to find this voice until later on so it's you have really, to go through our little system first you have to comply and bow first yeah and then and then sometimes even then you have to continue complying or you just move forward and don't get the benefits of complying. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know that's scary. That 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 is why I don't post anything on my own personal Instagram. You know who I realize I'm like. I think people think that they're gonna get like an artist when they talk to me, like Eminem or you know some sort of like chill introvert artist. And I notice a lot of rappers are <coughs> or singers. I am operate more like a Dame Dash, which was Jay-Z's partner. And it's like, I'll blow up in a boardroom. Like, I'll like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, cool. Like, fuck you. Like, you know, I will like be reactive because if the system's playing me, I don't like being a slave about it. I don't like keeping my fucking head down. And like, fuck you. I, if you're going to fuck me and make me change my behavior, I'm going to let you know how that makes me feel. <laughs> and, I mean, but we've actually talked about this before where you had examples of men doing that and, get like, getting away with it or getting something better or blowing up yeah. even more. Yeah. Whereas, like, I don't have a lot of examples of right, that Right, but happening. you can be it. It can be. Sure. It guaranteed can be. But the threat of losing it before I feel like I've gotten it. <laughs> well, here's the thing. So it's scary. Right, fair enough. And I, I dig that, I respect that. But like, um, Dr. Dina or whatever, like who Weeds has written about and they like cut her out and didn't pay her, because someone else did it. Someone else produced it. Dane Dashman started his own company. That's what it is. The women collecting her community, which but you have now. I see more grants and stuff and good competitions for female filmmakers than anyone else. Second one down right now is, is black or people. That doesn't color, mean they're great. allowed to publicly smoke weed or do anything else that just like... just so you can build a community. There's a lot of people willing to support female filmmaking communities right now. Rightfully so, I'm with that. I'm just saying, like, I think you have a lot more power than you realize, but that's obviously what the chicken on my side of the road would say. Yeah. Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know. Get on the other motherfucker's side. It's the only reason in the world. <laughs> The only reason in the world doesn't matter why. Everyone wants to speculate why. I don't give a fuck. But I have a, What's on the other side of the road? Doesn't matter. It's irrelevant to me. We're talking about the road. I thought we were talking about the chicken. That's the misconception. This scenario only takes place on the road. Everyone get lost in that motherfucking chicken's life story. <laughs> what? You're hot. This platinum grape is my shit. <laughs> it's my fucking weed. I found my weed platinum grape. If anyone wants to buy me a gift, and I'm very open to that, thank you so much. These guys are relatively new to the Ontario market. Support this new company, Organic Craft Platinum Grape, which is OGKB and Platinum Kush. It's a hybrid. This TAT is coming in at 24%. This sounds like a sponsorship voice. I'm giving them it because I fuck with it that much. <laughs> it, it's really lovely. And they also give the uh, the Turk profile. They got limonene, myrcene, and beta caryophyllene. Limonene. I feel like the limonene is how they get it to smell like grape. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah, mixed with the myrcene. Yeah. That's like grape. Yeah. So buy me buy me some of that. 
<laughs> or just e-transfer me uh, 50 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. You can PayPal me. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. We'll figure it out. Anyway, speaking of that, me and Winnie are taking the podcast to another level. Yes, we are. We're Look getting, at this setup. We, we are having these revelations that this is a really strong collaboration for us and we want to put more more energy in it. You may notice I've been making some great social media content. <laughs> yeah, I have noticed. Some some de- some definitions with cute, cute photos. Mm-hmm. Um, some thoughtful posts, some sharing things, and uh, we release affirmations. So we're going to do affirmations and meditations once a week. Yeah, affirmations, meditations coming at you on the YouTube uh, and everywhere. Everywhere. All, so all Spotify, over. Apple Music, where you've been listening to this or podcast, Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Right? If anywhere, YouTube, wherever you listen to this, these will be given in the same channels. So, so if you like that stuff, please watch it. No. Listen I, to it so, and share it. Yes. Thanks for plugging in that. But I'm talking about we're going to do a Patreon. Oh, yeah, that's. I'm not ready to talk about that. Okay, cool. Well, there's going to be cool stuff there, too. <laughs> yeah. There, there's just more stuff coming. Yeah, I'm there's excited. more stuff coming. I'm I just know. excited. <laughs> I love how excited you get about things. Well, I only get excited about things I care about. I know. <clears throat> I actually love everyone knows, if you don't know, if you're well, uh, new to the channel or the podcast. Um, I work at a weed retail shop, and I get the pleasure 1922 shout out shout out 1922 and i get the pleasure of bringing home oh. some really fantastic oh. weed these collab projects uh, 232 series three line terpene sticks are you fucking kidding me this is like giving me candy it is and he <coughs> gets so excited you've never seen anyone get so excited but that's this sake. Come on! <laughs> Come on! Never stop. Never I stop getting never excited. Stop. I love yeah, it so he, much. I think that's part of the reason why you get so many gifts. <laughs> it's because once someone gives you a gift once, they're like, that felt amazing. You're exploiting my, he... my reactions. <laughs> You're exploiting my uh, autism. I know. I don't want to. That's autistic as fuck. <laughs> I just go nuts. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I do throw fits though. I do throw happy fits. I do throw happy fits. And sometimes not so happy. Oh, I had a banger the other week. That was crazy. <laughs> that was like five weeks ago now. It's like five weeks ago, yeah. over a month. Yeah. Head banging and everything. Yeah. That's wild. I know. Just it kidding. is. That was a good one for us. I think that there was a lot of learning in that one. Yeah, yeah. You held it down. You killed it. Yeah. That was good. Cool. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I, I learned that, because cause I generally, at some point, will explode also, and... Winnie's strong. And, Winnie may be passive, <laughs> but she's strong. It'll shock you into a, I like it. a moment of contemplation, just like a quick, it doesn't it's last clarity. very long. It's clarity. Um, it's clarity. But it's still not the right way uh, to deal with what's happening for me yeah i know for me i'm just saying in that position it's the most effective but it's not the right way for your i think there's a more efficient way even i think there's a more efficient way i haven't found it yet but last time was very helpful concise communication like (laughs) no (laughs) no Uh, oh that's me talking on this side of the street yeah i'm the chicken on this side of the road yeah and but when i'm on that side of the road I can't hear. Yeah. I can't I can't take in any more information. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Fuck. So you almost need to It's like let it's it like express solving, itself. It's you, you need to help solve tangibly. Yes, that's what I mean. Possible. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's what a concise information about how it's being fixed. Yeah. Like I need to know and that it's fixed cuz if I'm like explosive at that point, if I'm choosing to react to something like a situation, then it like, I need to dote. It's like an alarm's going off in my head, and I need to dote on information. And if that information I'm, do- I can't control the fact that it's going rah, 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 dote on it, dote on it. If somebody intelligently close to me slips that information with, boom, like Matt Spandy, clo- like people have done it correctly around me as I'm about to go, and they go, no, don't worry, and I'm like. 
I can put the pin back in. Yeah. Yeah, but it, they, like, those two names I just said, these people are borderline, like, me <laughs> as well in, in many ways, or, like, yeah. also kind of geniuses in their own way. It's, like, it, it's, it's a very unique form of communication. It has to yeah. be very bold and simple and concise, and then I need to feel like I'm, I haven't fucked you up. That's yeah. what went horribly the wrong last time is when you react, I'm like, oh, fuck, now I'm guilty that I fucked yeah. up her mood. Yeah. And I made her yell at me. But she goes into a big old strong mama fucking mood. It's, I'm seeing who you are as a mom. I'm like, shit. I do not want to piss that one off. Yeah. Fuck. You got a strong border. I like that. It takes a lot I to bet. get That's to that point. That's strong limitation. And I'm like, man. How many times do we think I've even got there in our entire 13 between, years together? Between 5 or 10. Yeah. Not more agree. than 10. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a once a year thing, if that. Yeah. I don't think so. And you you learned it late or you gained it late. Yeah. 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 It yeah. Used to I be let it out tweets. now because I've uh, hit it for so long and I've tucked it away and thought it was bad. So I do Just let like it out I when tried it comes. to do about my fits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But why do we do that? See, that's the thing. That's where I can embrace the animalistic reaction of it sometimes. But ultimately, it's not good for my brain, my heart, my throat. It just doesn't feel good, you know. I I <clears throat> I feel silly afterwards, but like it's ultimately like this tr- freight train that's coming that I can't stop. I can see it coming. Yeah. I can like fuck. It's like shit. It's about to arrive, and then it happens, and then I'm like, and no doubt I know I'm a powerful creator, so I'm creating things that like go along with that, right? And then I mess it up further, and it's yeah. like I need to drop all things and like go run. Like I need to remember to click into that and go run. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like to like just Forrest Gump that shit. Forrest <laughs> immediately like I need to leave. I need to, to just and if it's cold, better. It's yeah. even better if it's cold. Like go run like hard until it like kind of hurts. Like yeah. I need the Jack Frost. I mean, gym. well, you you told me this great story about um, a a dad who when their kid was um, like ha- crying or uncontrollably like it was just felt like. It, they couldn't stop it themselves, he would splash cold water on their face. Cal. Yeah, I didn't want to out them. <laughs> In case anyone has any type of feelings about that, they can't Cal's the most reach. intelligent, eloquent father I've ever met, and he would have no problem discussing the benefits of it and how he did it with such love. Great. <coughs> well, I also think that it is love. That's, and a, I, that's, and a, I, that's a sign him up for that, but and I also, I'd be willing to have that conversation. Yeah, and I also think that's genius because that is the power of distraction. So, like, that's mm. what we, we learned a little bit. So that's, like, you know, it, it, you're going to have to accept it at those times. But it it was great, actually, <coughs> because it sparked all of this great conversation about, like, what happens, you know, if that happens around our kid. Like, the, these are things that we need to talk about so they're not shameful. Exactly. And they're not... There, you don't need to tuck them away for years and years and years. I saw we need actually to talk about that. Yeah. Because you need to have a game plan. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's like working and, with what you and, have. And normalize it in a, way, <clears throat> in a way, you know, like... Not be afraid to talk about it. Yeah. Because then, if you distance them from it, I feel like they're even closer to thinking it's their fault or something weird like that. You and, know what I mean? And I feel like people our age and, and older, like, <clears throat> they saw so many people hide away the thoughts, the, the, the parts of them that society said, mm, we don't really want to look at that part. Yeah, and that's why I love being that part. Fuck you guys. <laughs> like, I, I want no problem actually explaining how I feel. My son or daughter would probably make it feel less demonic than anyone. Like, they would <clears throat> be like, why do you feel like that? And kids straight up just ask you that. And I'd be able to be like, Oh, good call. Um, why do I feel like that? Because this happened. And you know what I mean? Like, I would just say it. You yeah. know? I mean, kids don't care. They don't know context. You can just well, say they, whatever. They, they, but they do. They're very in tune with, like, emotion. Um, so, like... Well, that's why they ask so simply. Well, yeah, and that's why... Why are you sad? <laughs> yeah, for you sure. a little kid ask you why you're sad? <laughs> I don't think that so. That would f- fucking... Throw a wrench in your throat immediately from your heart. Yeah. Why are you sad? I'm gonna write that in a movie. I'm gonna write That's that. That's definitely our, in a movie. In our show, me and Winnie are writing a show. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great show. Thank you. 
we collect ideas for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Once we... I feel like it will be nice to, like, go somewhere and say, we're writing this now. Yeah, that's a good call. Take three months to go to Hawaii and like, mm, write the show. Beautiful. I love that. Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> well, we just made a plan here on the podcast. There you go. Yeah, and we can... Yeah. We can bring our our fish started jumping out of the water and I cleaned his tank today and I I've not seen him do this before so I'm just like a little concerned. <clears throat> I love what you did with the tank. Thank you for making it clean again. Well, we can have Shania in filth for the, his first uh Isn't this nice? This Oh yeah, guys. Welcome to our home. This is um our weed bar. Yeah, we dreamed about having a weed bar in the early days of weed. And then we we tried to shop for something for a while that was right, and then we ended up changing up the room, which was, like, highly beneficial. Oh, my God, Ralph's bed is staying there. That's fucking perfect. Just seen that. Yeah. We'll leave that. Great. Just make sure to sweep behind there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these candles smell great. <laughs> this feels clean. I'm high as fuck. You guys are here. <laughs> Winning's here. <clears throat> it's a good show. I feel uh, like we talked about a lot of vulnerable good stuff today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, but we you were introducing everyone to Shania, our, our weed bar. And, oh yeah, uh, our weed bar. And so we got uh, these ebony leaves, these herbal goods. We have right now on deck uh, platinum grape. Uh, these collab pre rolls. These terpene sticks. <clears throat> Straw, Nana. Straw Nana. Um, I got the fine. This is what whatever our premium indica is. I have in this black ace. Uh, you got the reserve in there. Some DC beautiful stuff. But this is some pink right now. Some pink Kush. Um, <clears throat> our friend grew this. What is the strain? Do we know? We don't know. It smells wonderful. It does smell really good. It's still a little bit moist, very hairy. Oh, oh my God, but there is an insane amount of citronine or lemony. I don't know. Yeah. There's some There's some double uh, citrus going on here. It feels really good. Mm. And some pinene. It's very green. So yeah, we were dreaming about this weed bar um, and... And we had discussed what we wanted. We were like, we were talking about where it would go and Some if Spanish it was going to be religion. shelves or if it was going to be like um, a cabinet. And um, we were like, oh, Shania should go on top of it. Yeah, um, we did say that. Yeah, yeah. So we were talking a lot about this weed <clears throat> bar. It's very this vibe. Like, it's like this vibe happened. The universe collectively put this together better than we could have. Yeah. And, um, and we kept striking out. We were actively trying to find the weed bar. Oh, yeah. We were having fun conversations with people on Kijiji. Yeah. We, and there was a lot of really nice things, but nothing really felt right. Because we have, like, you know, it's condo style living. So yeah, it's like, it's, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a smaller space. So you got to be very wise with... I mean, it's big enough. It's nice. It's like the studio, you That's know? That's not good. Wow. I always say that this place is like when we lived in the studio. Yeah, you know, like this we're living in a studio. It's pretty much like a studio and like we live in it. It's a workspace plus a, a bed. <laughs> there is a wonderful room for a yeah, nice bed. Yeah, there's a bedroom. We made It's a workspace with a bedroom. We celebrated our ourselves in our resituating of our bed bed uh, space. We're we're actually just doing the uh, the the good mattress on the floor. Yeah. We're hustling. It's it. awesome. We're thugging it out right now and we are we're obviously like going to consider getting the full thing, but we just start. I was starting to like. I don't know. No, my we, sleeps we are amazing. Sleeps we yeah. thought we thought uh, that was just like a lovely surprise, <clears throat> and we're always both pretty open to things like this. Like, yeah. but I'm probably the more conservative one in the back of my mind. I'm like, yeah, we'll be getting a new bed. Um, but, but then, like, the, I slept quality. awake for the first night, and I loved waking up so close to the ground. Yes, and I still do. And, like, all of our back issues stopped, so... It's I cooler. It's great. I get better sleeps. I don't have a sore back anymore. And also, when I crawl into bed uh, from, like, just being an artist weirdo that's up all night, and when he's, like, sleeping, I, like, wake her up way less because I can not have to crawl over. I can <laughs> step over. Yeah. It's actually amazing. I highly suggest it. Just, you know, make sure to always sweep around your hardwood floors or keep it clean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, sometimes it, it gets a, like a little, and I'm like, okay. Just remember you are on, it's close to the floor. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, just keep it nice and clean for yourself. So yeah, we really manifested that weed bar, and it's not yeah. exactly what we were, I guess, talking about. But it all about, fits, but it, too. It fits even better in this space. Like, yeah. And, and now, I'm talking, I'm constantly thinking about what my next weed bar looks like in our yes. next place. Yes. Because yes. I'm thinking all glass like see through glass. Mm. I want to be able to see the weed. So there's no there's going to be a bunch of containers and they're going to um, yes. I'm going to label the containers somehow like I'm going to find chalk. like like yeah, like chalk or even like um mark removable markers. Yes. You know, something. I'm not sure yet. And I think it's going to be, like, on on shelves. I like Things that idea shelving. of having it up. That's like nice. Pharmacist. Thick, thick wood shelves. <clears throat> pharmacy. Actually. Welcome to the pharmacy. Yeah. Yeah. Not Nothing too high, because I want it all nothing visible. Nothing too crazy. But I... No, the, will what, crazy. what the point of this story was, though, is that just, like, if you're looking to manifest something, think about it. Think about what it looks like. Even, like, look on places... Look at the, look at it online. Just look find at it. yeah, explore without the pressure of having, having to, to buy, or, buy or do it. Just like don't look for consumer. the joy of thinking about what this could be. Yeah, don't let the the thing that it excites you. Don't let that turn turn you away from from. Sometimes I think we think about our limitation towards the thing, so we turn away from thinking about the great thing. But you can just like enjoy that. You can just like enjoy the thought of it, and chances are someone will give it to you, or you'll manifest it some way that's way easier. Like magical things happen outside your means if you just enjoy the actual flow. God, that's a beautiful joint. This weed block and burns perfectly. I was just looking at this Stella Artois, um, which I got for free, which I got for my dad. Yeah, it says Joe's beer on it. Mm. I don't like alcohol, but I like a cold beer. Stella. I like a cold beer. Yeah. Stella's great. Yeah. But just like a cold beer on a hot day. I know. I wonder if like non-alcoholic beer is also delicious. Okay, so what I just if don't it, like the What if it doesn't get as cold? Because you I know, know how you know you do want to milk, milk substitutes don't get as cold as regular. Milk. I know. I remember that. I think it's just because the the consistency also, is just a little bit thicker. We're back from. Uh, no more beyond or impossible me neither. Like that filler fucked with Winnie shit. What did you get? Chalitis? Chalitis. Fucking bullshit. Yeah. And it's like, fuck that. We ate a huge, 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 huge slice of shepherd's pie. Like an entire casserole dish. It was so good. I only take an entire casserole dish and cut it into four. And honestly, it wouldn't have tasted that good with real meat. I agree. It's too irony. I don't like real meat anymore in that way where it's like, ooh, blood, blood, gross, but gross. But I could have done like a, a California burger base or something. I think mm. that would have been good still. And I even had those materials. <laughs> I'm sorry. I it's think okay. I'm Liz, you're a chef. I'm Winnie Chef. Yes. So I take that job seriously, so I do take responsibility for that, but now I know. I get leveled up eating experiences that I would not buy myself. <clears throat> I would live on a very bland diet of smoothies and sandwiches and salads. Winnie's diet makes me feel sad. I, I like, like cooking. Uh, I can make things. I actually like make, like I like putting together a sandwich mm -hmm. or a smoothie. I like making things, but cooking specifically, I don't like using the pots and pans. Food you I don't like cutting bag. up shit. I don't like using the oven. That's so fucked. I don't love like all that shit. Don't like using the barbecue. The shit don't think you're like talking it. about is the shit I love to do. I like standing next to a barbecue when you're cooking. I love when you're standing <laughs> next to me at the barbecue, but it sounds like we got ourselves a day. You <laughs> we should want get to a little one. My barn? We should get a little barbecue for right Yeah, we after. should. Exactly. Let's do that. Because I love the smell of barbecue. Yeah. That's what I'll say. I love the smell I'll of... I'll sell barbecue of, right from here. <laughs> I'll fucking cook barbecue and sell that shit all yeah. winter long, bitch. Cook Sorry. Meat cooking mm. on a barbecue? Yes. Not so much even indoors. On a barbecue meat cooking? The caramelization of 
is one of my favorite smells. Nice. There's someone down the street that actually uses his yes. barbecue pretty often. Yes. So at night, I get that smell I like a nice amount of times, I would say. Oh now, I'll encourage him to keep barbecuing. Well, we're going to leave a note on that guy's door and say, continue to barbecue, please, because it fills us with what we need. And I, <laughs> I would do some fucking uh, beef Maui ribs, honestly. Those are delicious as shit. Beef Maui ribs? You know those what does thin that Maui ribs? They're thin. Often are they called Maui? Yeah, they're called Why? Maui ribs. Because they're invented there because they're sweet. It's a sweet Maui teriyaki. And the way that they're cut. Fuck. Yeah, they're sweet. We used across. to eat ribs all the time. We um, ate enough ribs for our entire life in like four years. Winnie grew up in Alberta and had a roommate that was from Alberta. And like very like reserved conservative guy. Sweet guy. Just like like very fair natured fair tempered and like he flipped out about my ribs and 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 the men in alberta the older men i don't know if they love that that i was coming in like the hot shot with new ribs i think winnie's dad didn't like that i make ribs i'm killing it with the ribs yeah. so good that the texas of canada uh, i'm saying i i go ham with the ribs i'm yeah. connected to southern culture i know in like, a lifetime i'm really I hungry a right barbecuer. now barbecuer yeah. And I think about it, and I'm like, fuck, I want that. But then when I think about a little bit more about the experience, I don't want it. Well, when I order brisket, that was good. Oh, man. I like that. Yeah, and when you cooked brisket. That's good, too. Yeah, we're vegetarians that we're are right now in this moment are loving, some, loving on some meat. Once in a while, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. That's that's. I think we're finding this cool thing Everywhere we're right in the middle. Do we I'll, talk about this? Uh, no, actually, we, we, our diet has kind of been. I think we don't like to preach diet shit, so we don't often talk about it. But we do talk about the good results of eating healthy and feeding yourself. But just in the same breath as talking about sleep and stuff, yeah, and exercise. But like, yeah, we've we've been actually on quite a journey for like ever since we watched that fucking documentary. I remember watching like two years ago, wasn't it? Forks and knives or something. Nah. It, it was it was it was overstated. It, it was, was proved to be a little overstated about like how oh, meat is but, super Oh bad. yeah, it had. Um, it, it was essentially encouraging you to cut meat completely out, which is you yeah. Can't, you it can't was just talking. It was the turkey. one that was talking about how the gladiators ate grains and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one, that one, that one. Yeah, Joe Rogan, I think, had him on and I mean, it was ripped like, him apart of it. I love what Joe Rogan does. He sets up and has a decent, lovely conversation with people. And makes them essentially eat their words when they deserve to. Like the fucking America's Doctor on CNN, Dr. Sanja or whatever. He's a great sport for being on. But like Joe Rogan was like, you guys tried to make me look bad for treating myself, you know, outside of your, you know, partner's process of how to do this. Pfizer is a sponsor, dude. So it's like they're going against their political ties. And Joe Rogan was like, I don't appreciate that. And the guy was pretty much like, yeah, we, we're, we, we made a mistake. Like, oh wow! Yeah, he's like, yeah, we're, and he's also like being fairly honest too. He's a great sport about like, yeah, a lot of the science is definitely overstated to, you know, create this successful campaign and stuff. Like it's you know, they have it's a good conversation. Go watch it. It's yeah. Like actually, good people from different sides come together, have a conversation. It's definitely got to be the way of the future. Yeah. You know, everyone has to just start seeing us as us. It's all us. We have to solve this idea together. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, I think they're doing a great job with what they know. I think that people benefit from that, and I think that there should be less judgment. Yeah. So, I mean, but who else? Did, no, Joe Rogan had on that guy with the vegan thing. So back to our diet, right? So that vegan thing that we watched like two years ago, it made us think, all right, let's just go plant-based. And I think we did for like three months. Like, yeah. I ate nothing but like plants and stuff yeah and you tables. really that I, oh, that yeah. affected you a lot which was great thing. I th and I think the more plants I, that I eat the better I feel I really yeah. feel that with juice though I love it's, juice but also what we had like yesterday we ordered from yeah. Impact we had a beautiful kale Caesar and um, we had some broth some bone broth yeah and that was good um, but we had like the spicy Thai chili Soup, soup. Yeah, yeah. Very nice squash soup. And then that other bowl, it was really unctuous and good and had quinoa in it and kale and stuff. Yeah, it's that just. That stuff will fill you up. 
Yeah, I will. I think for for me though, the the carrot juice and orange juice that we do, and we put ginger and lemon generally in it if we have it. Um, that I'll have that, and I can <coughs> significantly feel now. It's happened too many times that I can, like, I'm like, oh wow, this is good for my body. Like I feel lighter. I feel more energized, I feel hot, more hydrated, I feel like water is going into my body differently because of the vitamins or something that I took in, I don't even know. And it's pretty magical. I kind of am having the same experience with juice right now that I had when I first found yoga, where I was like, whoa, this is a hack. Everyone needs to, <laughs> yeah. to learn about this yeah. because it it's impacting me so extremely that I don't necessarily get with food. I will say though, though since I uh, since I really found out that I have ulcerative colitis, it's healed up now. It's been about two weeks. Um, I wasn't taking in as much food because I was limited to what I could have, and I would say that 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 time. Um, I could really feel when I had food how it energized me, which I didn't, I don't know if I was connected to prior to this. So all in all, nice. yeah, it's been a pretty challenging month actually. October has been a pretty challenging month, but oh, yeah. I feel like I'm now on the other side of it being like, I feel like good too. learning, good awareness. There's things that I'm really taking and moving forward with that will highly benefit my life. The value, like, keep the lesson, you know? Forgive the mistake, keep the lesson. Humble, share that to me today. No. Yeah. That's right on. Bubbles. It's not a strong sparkler. Mm, I didn't know that. I guess but the juice weighs it down, but it makes it taste good. Ananas oh. and mango. Okay, is it that time? Good times. Good times. We hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. We went on a rip. Because we skipped it last week. Yeah. Fun. 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 Roman scholar here. Do you want to try this? Yeah. The Roman scholar Herodotus recorded in his notes that when a beloved household cat died, Egyptians shaved their eyebrows. This was a sign of mourning, a period that was deemed officially over when their eyebrows grew back. Wow, I definitely see how. That could be a good time measurement for that pain to subside. I don't know how long it takes for eyebrows to grow back. Probably approximately two to three months. <laughs> I would say two to three weeks. No. It's facial hair, it's like a beard. But how long have your eyebrows gotten? If you wouldn't shave your mustache for two to three weeks, how long do you think it would be? Are they not softer? Do they grow back well? I don't know. I've never shaved my eyebrows. I'll see if Google That'd knows. That'd be a fun fact. Do eyebrows grow back? Yeah, absolutely. I know they grow back, but like, how long does it take? Hmm. Jamie, you want to look that up? Those potatoes I made are so good. They're in the hot oven right now. Did you eat one? Oh, I ate like a handful. Oh. I actually need to put some cheese on them. Okay, here we go. How long does it take for eyebrows to grow back? 
When it comes to eyebrow regrowth, patience is key. Give it at least two to three months to see hair growth. I nailed it! Eleven, you nailed it! Okay. That's how long it takes to let go of a cat. The, oh, the hair growth cycle for eyebrows is between three and four months, so you need enough time for your hair to respond to your changes. Yeah, dude, I nailed that shit. I'm brilliant. I am so smart. I don't know how I do it. <laughs> wow. Well, what book should we pull from today? I think I'm going to do Neville Resurrection. I've just been resonating with that book so much lately. Okay. Great. That's going to come. And I'm going to use my intuition and psychic abilities to pick the perfect page. Oh. I figured I'd show the folks on the video. Yeah. If you're listening to this, keep listening to it, go to the video, line up exactly where we are in the on Spotify with exactly where the YouTube is, and then listen to them simultaneously. <laughs> on different headphones. <laughs> <clears throat> Time to join the Dow. No way out. It's just to go through it. Energy never does. Wait, please say a number between one and one hundred and eleven. Actually, hold on. Please say a number between 22 and 222. 56. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. The quality of mercy is twice blessed. It's blessed. It blesses him who taketh and him who giveth. Mercy. The good you subjectively accept as true of others will not only be expressed by them, but a full share will be realized by you. Transformations are never total. Force A is always transformed into more than a force B. A blow with a hammer produces not only a mechanical concussion, but also heat, electricity, a sound, a magnetic change, and so on. The vibratory correlate in the subject is not the entire transformation of the sentiment communicated. The vibratory correlate in the subject is not the entire transformation of the sentiment communicated. The gift transmitted to another is like the divine measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, so that after 5,000 are fed from the five loaves and two fish, 12 baskets full are left over. Um, <clears throat> wow, I'm really, I, I want to read this again. The vibratory correlate in this subject is not the entire transformation of the sentiment communicated. Right, okay, so the vibratory correlate in the subject is not the entire transformation of the sentiment communicated. I can give you a gift, and it's not just my singular intention is the value you're going to get out of it. Yeah. You're going to get more value out of it than just the single vibratory intention, right, that it moves with. Right. Yeah, so that's the hammer. Yeah, I get more comes from it. The mercy, yeah. So the quality of mercy is twice. So this is like the abundance. The like, yeah, how 
the many sides of value. Yeah. Of one thing is. Cool. Wow. Fifty six. That was cool. Yeah, that felt like a whole new thing. Look, traveled throughout the country, eventually establishing his home in Los Angeles. In the late nineteen fifties, he gave a series of talks on television, and for many years, he lectured regularly to capacity audiences at the Wilshire Evel Theater in Los Angeles. His 10 books, written over a period of some 30 years, deal with creative visualization and the transformation of consciousness. Neville, born in Barbados, West Indies. Wow. Neville was the fourth son in a family of nine boys and one girl. At age 17, he came to the United States to study drama. In 1932, he gave up the theater entirely to devote his attention to his studies in mysticism began his lecture career in New York City and traveled throughout the country, eventually establishing his home in LA. Cool. Wow. Neville. Prayer, the art of believing, feeling is a secret, freedom, freedom for all, out of this world, and resurrection. This is what this book is. It has all these in it. So feeling is a secret, the other one, in this. Oh, cool. Yeah, so this is like his one thing, and then it's like the art of believing, freedom for all, such good stuff. He's my favorite writer. Like, I think I'm a resurrection of Neville. I think that our center points of consciousness share a similar intention, so we possibly come from a similar frequency or something like that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again for joining us, everybody. Yeah, yeah. I think you guys are too. Yeah. It might be time for us to Take some of those potatoes. Mm. And make them wet with cheese. Wet? Yeah. Lay it in moist cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Love you. Let the cheese drip as well. It's filleting the wet with potato flavor. This was a. Thank everybody for enjoying our uh, conversation and uh, make sure to go subscribe to our Patreon. Oh man, that's not a thing yet. Okay, but it's it is a thing. thing. It is. If you've listened to this now, oh yeah, it in is. In the future. Totally. That's right. It it's is. It's totally a thing by the time you're, this comes out. You're listening to this by now. Yeah. So you got to understand go check out our Patreon. <laughs> that we've had one now for time, actually. If you're. Like a week. <laughs> <laughs> All times are only a week old. No, I mean, like, someone could be listening to this in, like, nine years. Oh, I see what you mean. This is 2021 right now. If you're listening to this in 2030, we've had a Patreon. We'll probably shut it down by now. <laughs> or... Or it's still going. It's thriving. Or we are, like, the best podcast on Patreon. <gasps> could you imagine if, like, Patreon, like, flew us out to a fence as, as the top <laughs> podcast? I was like, wow, that was so neat. Okay, those are good. Well, I like um, those. Cheers, those guys. Those were good weed bars. Subscribe. <laughs> Did you hear that noise? I want to eat these potatoes with cheese on them. Bye bye. Bye, love you.